today we are here at the residence of Lieutenant General M. A. Zaki ji, who has served Indian Army in various capacities and received Veer Chakra, Ati Visishta Seva Medal, Parama Visishta Seva Medal for his gallantry. He hails from an illustrious family of soldiers. His father was Brigadier Ahmad Ali ji and his son is also rightly working in the army. He served in various capacities in the army and as advisor to the governor of Jammu and Kashmir. He was also appointed as the vice chancellor and chancellor of Jamia Millia Islamia University, New Delhi. Thank you, sir, for inviting us to your residence. It's a privilege and pleasure to be with you and listen to all your valuable experiences. To start off our conversation, in our culture, we always place mother as the ultimate divine form. We refer to our motherland as uh, Bharat Mata and uh, call our soldiers as the proud sons of uh, Bharat Mata. Uh, for you, what flashes in your mind the moment you hear the word mother? It evokes love and affection, the first thing which comes to my mind. Thereafter, the respect which it deserves. And finally, we will do anything for the motherland. Motherland. The mother. Very well said, sir. Geographically, India is a diverse country with different climatic conditions. Uh, in, uh, at one region, there is a desert and the other sea coast. You, in your service, you were placed at almost all regions. That's what you told me. Like, what, what were the tough climatic conditions and how could you overcome and handle those uh, situations, extreme climates? The human Especially body is at such the borders. The human body is such which can get accustomed to the rigors of weather. And uh, that happened when I was in Ladakh. Mm. I was commander of forces in Shachin. And thereafter, I was in the desert. Initially, I started my service with the desert, Jodhpur Desert. And uh, fr after the desert, we went into the Nagaland. Mm. Primary so jungles, jungles and hilly terrain. Mm. So we served three years in Nagaland. And thereafter, we went into south, and uh, you see, each part of the country has got something to be talked about. They are good people, friendly, and it was a pleasure being with Northeast, where I served good about eight years of my service. Nagaland, Mizoram, Assam, and uh, Sikkim. So, it, it has a vast uh, area, tremendous area. It, each time you went into a different place, it was a great adventure. I know. And also to be with command of troops, mm -hmm. you have to be absolutely with them and so that they also come up on the same line. I know. You would be the inspiration for them, well, for the I forces behind. It was the inspiration was derived from both sides. Because from True. the troops as well as from the <laughs> <laughs> no, all a leader always plays a prominent role. So uh, it does, uh, <laughs> but then you have to have good troops to command. I know. Then I understand. With a good leader, possibly you know you would be training them to be your I, followers. I we had excellent troops. I had the marauders with me, one of the finest troops in the country, mm -hmm. and uh, I was proud to be with them. Uh, in your tenure, you were awarded with Veer Chakra, Visishta Seva Medal and Param Visishta Seva Medal for your gallantry. Awards came in because of the good work of my troops. I would say that. And uh, it was the sum total of uh, our effort that we 
captured the enemy position of seven Baluch, one company at 30 Jamal Singh in 65 war in September, on 20th September, the day I was wounded also after the capture of the battle. I lost only five men in battle. Uh, people say in attack we lose more men, but the enemy lost 17 men. So we took him by surprise and my troops were excellent. I can name you excellent com platoon commanders. And Vasudev Dalvi was one of my platoon commanders and uh, he told me, he shouted at me, Ke Sahib Pure Baga, Pure Baga means look to your front. When we came out of the sugar grain field, he said, Sahib Pure Baga, bunker hide. I had not seen the bunker. Huh. And there was the chap who fired LMG from there and my chap, my radio operator, Baban Timkare, was killed. Now I didn't know that he has been killed because Suresh Khurade picked up the radio set and we went into there and we asked those people to come out, they didn't come out, so it's either they or we, so they had to go. And uh, later on, after the capture of the object, when I checked up, Suresh Khurade told me, my, I asked him, where is Baban? He says, sir, Palla, Palla means dead. So I realized that those people who were in the bunker had fired. It was for me, but there I was lucky. It was Bhavan who got it. He was a very good soldier. So that's how, and we captured the position of seven Baluch. We got the map case of the OP officer, observation post officer. We had four vehicles full of ammunition, 106 millimeter gun ammunition, which we later utilized for firing at the enemy's tanks. So that was, uh, and I was wounded after, at 9.15, after the, we captured the objective at 9, I was wounded because the enemy fired from Dolan, a place, tank fire. The burst, shell burst five places from me and they cut me open. So that was, and I, I had a grenade wound on my leg. <laughs>
by 5.30 and captured it by 2 o'clock at night. That was Manihala. We were under fire from the Lahore's position, Ishugal Canal, under artillery fire. That was the first, that was on 16 September. On 18 September, we marched 20 kilometers back and went into attack, battalion attack at Jaman. Northeast, there was two company attack, Charlie company, my company, and Bravo company, Lieutenant Vasan Chauhan. This was in broad daylight. It was at 3.30 in the afternoon. The enemy artillery was playing hell. They were firing at us, but then we continued. I mean, that was there, and uh, we captured Jaman by 5 in the evening. There's the time the nearest shell landed about 10 paces of, from us. I could see the shell land and it boom, and then there was a fire. We captured 13 of the Baluchis. This was one of the Baluch battalion. They were all six footers, tough people. But then you see, this was the evening when we captured them. I told my troops and I gave out my puris and sabzi to them to eat. <laughs> and he said, the Sudar Saab said, Ke Saab, our commander ran away. And when he goes to sleep, he will be dead. So that's what it is. So they were not happy with their own leader. And they took, and he said, Ke Saab, we will not run away. We will be commander. We will be dead. So that was that. So we, thereafter, we were asked to move on to Rajoke, a village, and to concentrate there for next operation. Okay. Uh, my company was again singled out and asked to move as vanguard of the task force to 30 German cities. We had seven cavalry squadron, a squadron of the tanks, and this time they were placed under command of the forward company, Vanguard. Tell us about uh, your stint at Kashmir. You are well versed with the terrain and uh, the operating troops. The first time I went to Kashmir was as a div commander at Baramola, the line of control, Uri, and uh, up to the entire Shamsabari range and Pir Panjal was under my command. I learned my, to know the terrain, it's absolutely essential that one has to walk through. So I had to walk first six months of my service. The people thought that I was definitely mad because I was walking up and down the features, climbing a hill. I never followed by, went by helicopter. I walked up to the feature by walking, but came back by helicopter. So that was the thing. So I knew the terrain as back of my hand. And that helped me when I was a corps commander. I knew exactly where the infiltration may take place and so on. But that was earlier because I didn't know that I ever got command 15 corps because I was the commanding 19 infantry division. But that was a great help. And thereafter, I went as uh, chief of staff of Dimapo, but in between, they halted me at Delhi and told me to get back to Srinagar as chief of staff. So this was my luggage had gone all the way to Dimapur and I was just, so I asked them to give me two days because I want to send my wife back to Hasbar and I'll go to Bharam, Srinagar. So this is how I came back to Srinagar as chief of staff. I was chief of staff at the court for about 10 months. Thereafter, I was on promotion, went at Director General Infantry, thereafter Director General Military Training at Army Headquarters. It shows the passion they it, have. It shows the, the, the love and for True. the commander, commander. And one another. It, it is just human being, human relationship. True. And uh, I'll tell you again, when I was hit by the insurgent fire at Kokarnath, he was inside the house. They had killed uh, two of the CRP personnel. This was the fire station. And uh, two of the, my Gurkhas 
of 11 Gurkhas, there were two of the Jawans were killed. I was informed about at night, it was a winter, 30 January. I was informed at night, so I said I will go in the morning. The distance which I covered in half an hour, I covered in one and a half hour because of whiteout early morning. I went to Kokanak and uh, the CRP company was that told me, Kisab Age Majao, Goli Aotai. We had gone there to see what was happening. <laughs> and uh, so we went, I had eight men with me. The Subhadar Muaditta was my escort commander. I had Bidhi Singh Havaldar from Parmandal, Jammu. I had Aziz from Tangdhar. And uh, one boy was, I'm forgetting his name, was from Bandipur. They are from the Jackalai. And we wrecked the area for good about 30 minutes, but we couldn't find an opening to go nearby. But then there was notice a, uh, a dip in the snow. There was six feet of snow on the ground. So I had started crawling. So two of the boys started to cover me. That one was Vidhi Singh, other was Akram. I said, no. We crawled for about 100 yards, went to the house where I saw the two bodies of my Gurkhas were lying. So I said, either they live, no. So we had to finish them. My ADC was AP Kumar. And that happened to be from Hyderabad. I'm not pro kill, but somehow I, when I picked him up, I didn't know that he is from Hyderabad. AP Kumar, an excellent officer very brave. So I took the grenade from him and tried to lobe it in Banda. The windows were shut. And that time they fired. When they fired, their rifle must have been shaken or something must have happened or God has to save us. Mm -hmm. It hit the door frame and the ricochet went through like this. Just touched me. And uh, there's a hole in my cap. And that cap yeah. is in uh, Maratha Light Infantry Red Metal Center Museum. Oh, oh. The whole. Still so preserved. <laughs> that, uh, and uh, I, there was a lot of blood, which I I never felt such sensation in my life, as I said. Even when I was wounded, I was not. It just crushed me. Just three places. And the blood was oozing out. So the CRP told the DG police at the control room, General Sarfi Sarma Goli like. So that means Marge. So that was so <laughs> the UN observers also gave report. This he and the ADC is dead. Now you will be surprised. There were people from the journalists from Delhi with DGP. DGP informed the governor, General uh, Mr. Grish Chandra Saxena. So Mr. Grish Chandra Saxena rang up Mrs. Zaki at. 11.30 or so, that Mrs. Zaki, where is your husband? So my wife tells me that he has gone at 5.30 in the morning, so I don't know where I he is, know. but he'll come back in the evening at 6 o'clock. <laughs> so this is how the thing happened, and people thought in the downtown Srinagar, the general is met dead, so there were a lot of rejoicing and so on. Well, but I was okay. It just was me, and oh, I was, uh, yeah. when I came back, uh, the my DDMS took me to the hospital. He said, you should be examined first. You can. I said, I'm absolutely all right. But they, I, they had to do the job, so they did. And the governor wanted to come and see me. I said, no, sir. I, you have a conference at 7 in the evening. I'll come there. People should see me as alive, not dead. <laughs> so this is how I survived. And uh, that's how it is. Sir, with all your experiences as an army officer, who faced several challenges, would you still encourage children from your family to follow your footsteps and join the army? No, oh, they must. <laughs> they must because uh, you are it's well a aware. very noble profession. Very noble profession. And uh, you lead men in battle, you train them and you go with them. They are covered in arms. Everybody is equal and everybody plays his part. And, uh, it will be my endeavor to tell my people that 
join the armed forces, whether Navy, Air Force, Army, it is immaterial. But you should serve the country in the best possible way you can. And I feel that serving the country at the line of control or at the border or at Siachen is one of the finest things one can have in life. In life. What are the changes you observe now? Uh, you worked as an instructor in your long tenure from your uh, period to the current generation. What are the changes or the transitions, transformations that you have observed in the army? Most important thing is about technology hmm. which has come in and uh, the changes that are of, for the good of the people and for the soldiers. Technology is the first and foremost thing which comes to my mind. Hmm. The other which I feel is we have to pay attention to. Most important thing is the discipline because discipline is bedrock of everything and they take you to any height of glory because what makes a soldier walk in under the fire? He knows that he is about to be killed and yet he does that. It is his discipline. It is love for the country, love for the motherland. So that is very much there today as was there in the past. It is just not gaining. So we are proud of that. During your long tenure, you stayed most of the time away from the family. So what was the impact? How did they receive? Well, I suppose uh, my wife uh, thought that uh, this is the lot of the army officer's wife and uh, she never complained about it. And uh, she was always at Hyderabad when I was in the field area. In our time, that there was no family cupboard where we could take the family. So that was one aspect of it. And the other aspect of it was when uh, one got uh, wounded in 65, when she got the message, I managed to give full marks to the adjutant branch of our army, very quick. And they sent a message that Major IC7613, Major M. Zaki, wounded in battle. Details follow. So when she must have received this, what must have gone through must have been a very, very difficult time. And she possibly, as she, was, she told me, but, uh, but she, was, she said, I had full faith that you were alive. <laughs> so she's it. as brave as you so, are on the front. Uh, so that's what uh, <laughs> I was lucky because she has been very supportive of me. <laughs> and and uh, as you also told me that your son is also in the army. My now. son is in the Maratha Light Infantry, Commander 4th Battalion, the Maratha Light Infantry. Now he's serving in the UN. Uh, as a political officer, he took uh, premature retirement, went over. And he always selects areas which are in conflict. South Sudan, Kosovo, Central Sudan. So he's going to Central Sudan now. Sir, you also worked as the advisor for the governor of Jammu and Kashmir. How was your stint? It was a very good experience because that the first time I got the opportunity of working in the, with the administrative people and uh, I was from the Indian Military Academy asked to go. So I, they wanted me to join the, uh, the civil, uh, like IS, all that. So I said, no, I'll remain as an army officer. And uh, that's what mattered because I wanted to. Thereafter, one and a half year, I was, uh, and I retired in 1993. And uh, the experience was very good because uh, I had a, good team of uh, IS personnel who worked with me, like uh, the Home Secretary was Mr. Mahmoudur Rahman, he is no more now, and uh, he was an excellent uh, administrative officer. The other people who worked, the DG police was Mr. Jitendra Nath Saxena, excellent police officer. And thereafter, there was the additional DG CID, 
Anil Kapoor and a very good officer. And the commissioner of Srinagar Valley was uh, Mr. Habibullah and I had a very good officer. So I had a very good team to work with and uh, we did the job and all of us in a manner which was befitting to the country. You were also appointed as the vice chancellor and also as a chancellor of uh, Jamia Millia Islamia University. Uh, that, that, that is so in 1997, June, the Shankar, the, the president, the then president Shankar Dayal Sharma appointed me as the uh, vice chancellor of Jamia Millia. There was a uh, exposure which I never had because I had a schooling in Prince of Wales's Royal Indian Military College. So it was a, a unique experience. I had to learn about things which I had not known. And when they started uh, having academic council, I know what, what is it about. And then the executive council, I said, what is it about and so on. But uh, I was again assisted by the people concerned. And I must give full marks to Mr. Zafar Hashmi who assisted me a great deal and uh, others were also very helpful. Post retirement, you also received the civilian award from the Government of India, Padma Shri. It was a uh, title. It was my services possibly for the JNK as an administrator, uh, advisor to the Governor JNK. That was a very lucky for, uh, break for me because and the civil award was there. It's an, I think I was a lucky man all the right through. And Sir, what is your message for youth? Train yourself well, do well in life, have full faith in God Almighty and in your country and serve the country as best as you can. God bless everybody. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your valuable time and sharing all your valuable experiences with us. Thank you so much. And it's been a great pleasure. Jai Hind. Jai Hind, sir. So those were the inspiring words we heard from Lieutenant General Sri Jaki Ji. His experiences and invaluable memories are a source of inspiration for the youth. Uh, that's all we have for this week, We the Soldiers program. We wish to have many more such luminous personalities in our program who can be a source of inspiration uh, for the youth. Jai Hind. Namaste. Mm -hmm.